Switch, push that off right there. Push that off. Okay, now take it and put it in this way for me. It only goes one way. You sure? Yep. You're positive. I'm positive. Try. Well, you can't. Oh, yeah, you did, because there's the little arrow. Yeah. So I had it in right. Yeah. Try it again. Hang in there, Troy. Here's now. Dalai Lama. Mm hmm. Testing two, three, three, six. You got yours on? Yeah, it's on. It's on. We're it's on, on, guys. It's on. Am I on? All right. Well, that's why we should start a little bit earlier every day, folks. Yeah. That's why we started. Thank you, Troy. That dang, you are a lifesaver. Yeah, Troy. When are you going to come by and say hi? Let me know when, you, when you're looking for another good dog or you want a girlfriend. I got a big sister. She's kind of ugly, but but she's real friendly. Hey. <laughs> given given the opportunity, <laughs> she ain't had much opportunity. I'll tell you that. That's the truth. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Well, folks, we're gonna do we're gonna do the the bad dog stuff tonight, huh? Yeah, I guess we are. Yep, I think we should. That seems to be what everyone's most interested in, and you know, honestly. I mean, I, I didn't realize it. You don't realize when you're doing something and you're in the moment. Mm -hmm. But then when you step back away and look, I guess, you know, I've been very fortunate of being able to be in the guard dog business. Because mm -hmm. it's just not a real common thing. I mean, I got a lot of, a lot of fun, learned a lot. Mm -hmm. and Seen a lot of things that no one's seen before. Yeah, exactly. But claim their, that's their claim, their claim to fame is something you've never seen before, I guess. Yeah, that would be, that would be it. Well, no one else has ever seen it. Well, almost nobody. There's a few others, a few of us. There, but, yeah. But I guess the biggest thing, and Scott can testify to this, he's, he does our research, as you know, so he's looked into a lot of the sports and, and the way they, uh, the way they work their dogs. And that's the way they should work their dogs. That's mm -hmm. that's how they get their points, right? Status quo, yeah. Status quo. <laughs> it is always yeah. typical. Yeah. And they're pretty much, it's all based on Shitson, basically. And there's some print training in there, but it's all based on the Shitson. Yeah, all, that, all exactly. The, yeah, all, all, they all have the, 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 hide, the hideouts and the stick right. and runs. Everything's the same, basically. It's all modified to a point, but it's, the same. Yeah. It's okay. all based off, and it's elaborate. Some of it's elaborate and yep. outside the box, and I come in people for doing what they do, which they should. Right. Uh, evolution of a sport and of the canine business is, you know, it's bound to happen. Yep. So, yep. And, you know. and Schutzen was the first, so everyone, you know, takes a little bit from the original. It's like, yep. like canine pro sports in this country, before I started it, there weren't any street protection dog sports at all going on. And now there's some people, you know. I call it, it must mean a sport for the common man. Yeah. Because the common man has his own guard dogs. Yeah. At home. Exactly. He lives with them. Yeah. Yeah. So why not have a sport, which is not a sport, but no. it's certification. Uh, but Certification. I but prefer. you can, if you add the sport element to it, it makes it more competition. And it gives a person, your everyday person, a chance to get in there with, you know, because some of these guys in these clubs are really pretty, their dogs are good and they're good. Yeah. That's what they do. Yep. They're professional handlers, basically. Absolutely. For a sport. Yeah. Yep. You know, and to some extent, like, they'll cross over to the street. Mm hmm Yeah. Because you can get a shits and dog to do personal protection training. Absolutely. done right. Yep. And it goes both ways. Right. The, o the only thing it's not known is... <clears throat> Because every dog in every, any sort of a security situation, protection situation, mm -hmm. he's got, hello there, jumping bean. <laughs> he's got, I shouldn't have said that. She's going to be. Well, it's all right. Mm. Uh, every dog in a protection situation is probably going to have, or almost every, is going to have backup. Think of police and military. They're the most common. Mm -hmm. And even in your personal protection in your home, I hope, and, and I've seen this, so I know it's happened, uh, you know, with, we've had some people with pro sports trained certified dogs that had burglars in their house and 
Their dog stopped the burglar, went into a guard, and they went and got their pistola or shotgun or whatever, yep. and held the, the my, thief. My dog is still by itself because there's more scenarios in uh, home invasion yep. and property invasion where the dog is alone. Exactly. The dog will let you know. You won't be there. You're not the dog holding dog around your property or around your house all the time on a leash. Yeah. The dog's actually free roaming, like you would a security dog on a car uh -huh. dealership. Mm -hmm. Not the same thing. He's no. not solitude. Eight hours, like he's on a job, right. but he's still out there he's patrolling. His, it's his yep. domain. He's patrolling. Yep. And something happens out there when you're in the house. It's him. It's him and them. It's on him. Yep. Yep. So it, it kind of fits into the mold of a guard dog business, but it still acquires and assimilates into home protection with personal protection dog also. Right, right. And and what I like to think is, I did Schutzen. I didn't do it, I've never done any French ring. I've trained, oh, three or four dogs for people, just the bite work portion and the obedience portion. They wanted to do French ring. And those are the major sports that I've pers personally been involved in, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I got in the guard dog business. So the problem that I run into is that people think from doing the sports stuff, you send the dog, he bites, and the bad guy goes, I quit. Most people do, but some don't. I mean, I've seen some, I've seen some old boys that flail a dog while it's hanging on to them for dear life, mm -hmm. you know. It's a so, me or you type thing. That's what? When life and death in the matter, all, 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 all bets are off. Yep, yep. Both sides. Yep. And, and this, is, this is where you've got to train a dog in defense as well as prey because in defense, you've got to be sure that dog's going to choose the fight over the flight because when he's getting his head bashed in by a brick, there's a good chance he's going to turn loose and pile you on you unless he's been trained to choose the fight over the flight. So, <coughs> somebody. Canine, pro hmm? sports dog. Um, what just showed on there? What we, got, we got a question here we're going to jump Canine, into. Pro sports dog be a security dog? Well, that's what it is. Can, can I what? Can Canine's pro sports dog be a security dog? Yes. That's yes. Ab absolutely. That's what it's for. Thank you, Mina. Thanks, but, Mina. Yeah, it's good certification. Pro sports certification for your personal protection dog. Yep. So the pro sports is added on for the, like I just said, it's for your common person that wants to come in and sign up and learn how to handle a dog and get points for it, but it's actually teaching them how to actually handle that dog in a real life situation. Exactly. So it's not, exactly. So the, whatever the pro sports, most of the pro sports trials are actual scenarios and for real life training right. that we do out here. They're just fine tuned to a point where there are points added and Right. You see all the, the niche. The niche of it is, or the, the fine tuning is what it is. Right. You know, certain things. You know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that's no, no, you're dead on. And and what we did was we took the elements of certain situations that could happen in real life, put a mathematical or numerical value to them, so we can explain to someone with a score written score sheet where they need to practice more with their dog. Right, where your dog is and what we need to work on. Right, and, and the biggest shortcoming that we see, all right, so in the bite work, the judging criteria, remember we have a written criteria in pro sports, you know what the judge is looking for. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt, because it's, it's in writing and it's been that way since 1992. So we take, the in the, in the bite work, the, we're looking for a dog who's capable of intimidating, dominating, and here's the key word, the difference between military, police, and sports. <coughs> Intimidate, dominate, and controlling the movement of the bad guy. This is where the what I call canine martial arts come in. And this, these are your foundations that I don't see anybody teaching anywhere to any of their dogs. No one, no one. And, you know, granted, except for maybe police officers, there, I don't know anyone in the sport world who's ever uh, engineered, overseen a real life street bite, so they're lacking some experience there. Mm -hmm. 
and I, and I appreciate they don't talk about something they don't know, but that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Carol, you got something over there? Yeah, because I read that question wrong. You read the question wrong. Yeah, okay. it's a Centrian dog. Can a canine pro sports dog be a Sentry? Sentry. Sentry dog, the military definition. Definition. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's a that's a word you don't hear often. Mm -hmm. uh, sentry dogs were a class of dog in, uh, started by the Americans in World War II. I mean, you you read some stuff on the mm -hmm. sentry dogs, if I remember right. So supposedly they were a little cup, cut above, a little tougher. They were, I guess, the, the American military's uh, first version of, of a guard dog, <laughs> maybe. Um, but so what are we going to look for? What are our foundation elements for a dog on the streets to handle a man so the civilian owner doesn't have to worry about walking up and get finding a brick up beside his head? And the first thing we're going to do, let me, let me explain why we're, why we're hitting the arms. Some people, I hear a lot of people talk about uh, uh, my dog targets the weapon arm. Well, that that's great if you can do it. Mm. Okay. But you see a fault with that? Yeah. What would that be? There's not much there. Not much there. Well, you know. If if you sent the dog after somebody and they're pointing a gun at you like this, is that what you're saying? Yeah, the dog's gonna get shot in the fucking head. Oh, yeah. in the head. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm not even gonna cuss, but you know, you center mass. You gotta look at the target. Train a dog to hit center mass, and it's a little different than on when you're shooting a gun at center mass, but it's typically the same thing. Yeah, and, and the reason first that dogs bite sleeves and arms, people got the idea through Schutzen that we're training a protection dog is trained to bite an arm. That's not it. No, just look where the arm's at. We want them high center mass, and here's the reason why. If a dog launches towards you, if it's running at you, I guarantee you, well, let me put it this way. There's, no, there's a truck stop up in Oklahoma in the panhandle <clears throat> that I'm talking about way back when. And one of the little things they had at this truck stop had a little cafe and a little gas station. And then they had a big sign, Snake Farm. Mm. And all the tourists, is on Route 66, all the tourists could stop, see all these, they had rattlesnakes in there and some copperheads and <laughs> it's all of Scott's favorite critters. Mm. And they had this one great big old uh, rattler, and he was, well, he's big, I, I always saw him coiled up. And his cage that, that they had him in, the container, whatever you want to call it, was, the front was plexiglass. And it was a real simple deal. For a, back then, for a dollar, you could win ten bucks. Anyone who could hold their hand up on that plexiglass when that rattlesnake struck, now it's an inch thick plexiglass. He's not getting through the plexiglass. He's not going to break the plexiglass. Yeah, but <laughs> if you could hold your hand there, and when that rattlesnake went, if you didn't move your hand, you'd win ten bucks. Human nature. Uh huh. Human nature. You know, I asked the old boy running it. No, I did not try it. Uh, I'm from water moccasin country. I don't, I don't mess with them kind of critters. But I asked the, the, the man who ran the truck stop, I said, because he had a line of these people just waiting and laughing at the person who's in front of them not being able to do it. And I asked him, I said, has anybody ever, you ever paid out to 10 bucks? And he said, not so far. And I said, well, how long have you been doing this? And he said, well, I think that snake's about six years old now. <laughs> so in all that time, nobody. nobody. And by the same human nature, if a dog ever launches for your body and you see him coming with your eyeballs, heading for the face, you're gonna do just like this. So this is gonna go like this. Yep. Step one. Exactly. And if the gun hand goes in front of the other hand, then he's going to bite. Then he's going to bite the gun hand. And there's another element to it. 
when dogs, we, the, the, you never teach a security dog to target a spot because then if he loses that spot, he doesn't know how to fight. It's like sending, sending a, a boxer in the ring with just a jab and then his opponent gets to this side and goes to throwing body blows and he's trying to jab over here. It ain't going to mm -hmm. work. So you, you have a dog who only knows to target high center mass, just like they teach you to shoot or cops to shoot a man, person on the streets. High center mass, go for your biggest target. With dogs, what that does is when you go high center mass, human nature <clears throat> is going to make that person go, ah, to save their face. Dogs are attracted to motion. So that means if someone's standing like a statue, a lot of dogs won't even bite. They'll get confused and go circle and wait for something to move. But if this dog is coming at you, when you do this, that quick motion will trigger all of his prey drive and he's going to go for these arms. Mm -hmm. When the Germans first started doing sleeves and body suits, it wasn't to teach the dog to bite arms. It was because they knew how just like they understood prey drive and defense drive. They're the ones that taught us about that. They knew also that if a dog launches for someone, the human's gonna... Protect himself. Yep. Yep. So that's why they're biting for the arm. Now, if they miss, well, on the way by, they say you get, and I've seen, I've seen some guys, well, I've seen one guy who knew to dodge, okay? But, if the dog dodges, he's back here behind this person, and for a split second, the dog's got a shot at someone who is not facing him. He can take in the back of their leg. Yeah, yeah back of their head. He can go up here and hit him in the traps behind the neck. Mm -hmm. So it's safe. Now, that's the problem with shooting for the gun hand. First off, it's standing still. If at the last minute you hold your other hand up, and you got to shoot this dog coming right at you. This is way different than a target going across. So if you did happen to grab this hand to steady it, when this hand moved here, he's going to bite this hand anyway. Yep. So the next problem you have is proximity. By proximity, I mean the closeness of the dog to the attacker. Hmm. You don't want the dog within arm's reach of the attacker if you can help it. Because as soon as, if, if a dog, if a dog were to ever nail me, I think I've learned enough, I can say that that ain't gonna happen anymore. Cause it sure did happen a lot in the past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it ain't gonna happen no more. But if it did, the first thing I'm gonna do, if he's right here, is I'm gonna reach up and grab me that collar I'm going to pull it tight, slide it up under his larynx, and go just twist the collar. Count to 14. That's about how long it takes normally with a flat nylon or leather collar for a dog to pass out. So i got 14 seconds. If that homeowner can't get to me in 14 seconds, I'm getting out and I'm gone. If I'm breaking into a house when no one's at home, and I know there's no one at home, I'll take that 14 seconds and add 8 and then I'll have a dead dog and I'll go ahead and steal whatever I want to steal. So, in, in a, a, for a, a true canine martial artist puts distance between himself, especially his head and neck, and a person's free hand. You can also have the situations where the dogs will bite and this happens more than someone trying to grab them because the average person, very few people have the presence of mind to grab at a collar to think when they're in that. That's a lot of pain. Something else I can vouch for. Mm -hmm. But what they do in a panic hysteria mo uh, mindset is they'll begin kicking at the dog. And if you have a male, especially he's vulnerable if you get gets him in the cods, if the dog bites and you're and you step back like this, trying to get away, or you, most typically people will turn and present a profile trying to pull. If they don't, if they stay frontal and they go, ah, and they stretch their arm out, but they don't 
pull it all the way up. Right here, the dog hanging on to this forearm is still within leg reach. And now someone can come back, and they will out of hysteria. They won't be aiming. They won't know what they're really doing. They will just reflexively go kicking at whatever mm -hmm. is hanging on to them. So you need your dog to get out of not only arm's reach, but leg reach. Right, what do we teach them to do when they start biting, Scott? And so we don't, I don't, uh, pushing the bite. I don't, the dog's pushing the bite. I want the dog pulling back. So you give your high center of mass, get a bite on, and you get the dog down on all fours. Then you start tug of war and dragging him up your body. Nice and gentle. The dog gets to the point where the dog is pulling back. So the dog gets a bite of your arm and goes down and pushes through, what's going to happen? No, you're not following, you're, I'm pushing in with the dog bite. Oh, if, oh, if you, oh, oh, after the bite. He's got him. Kicking, whatever. The dog's dead. It, it's, it's a bite. Dog goes in, does his bite, and pulls down towards me. Pulling. You're incapacitated. You're down. Now you start kicking and flailing, you let go. And people don't, this is a rebite, which rebite has different definition in a lot of different senses. But a rebite is another threat coming at you and getting the defensive drive and coming out and, uh, how do you say it, uh, immobilizing the other target. You immobilize this target, now the leg's kicking, you immobilize, get the dog in the leg, you immobilize there. And the dog is back pulling. So you're laying over there and the dog has your leg over here and nothing you can do. Nope. You're toast. So there's pushing the drive, pushing the drive, pushing the prey drive, pushing to the bite serves no purpose. It does, you know, if you're going to run away from the dog and you're running away from the dog, you know, trust me, chicken legging out, the dog chicken will wing. take, chicken winging, yeah. the dog will push through you. Now I've seen two dogs and there's one called Black Bart <laughs> that I don't know how he does it, but on a run out, run out, he will run out, he will grab you and swing his body momentum wise and come back and drag you to the ground. He's always pulling. Yep. Like bulldogs used to do. Uh, Bulls. Bulldogs used to do back in the day. Way back in the day. When they were bull baiting. That's where that comes from. But you're, you're mobilizing the target. Now the target gets up, you know, then you get the rebites, like I'm saying. Quick motions. Yep. And you take out your target. But your dog is protected and at reach where he cannot get hurt. That's it. That's the big thing. Yeah. And you get what well, Scott's talking about mm. with the bulldogs, the way they hit, hit a bull's nose and fling their body. Um, I, I could do a whole hour on podcasts on how bulldogs fight. They will hit and literally throw their bodies around. It drove me crazy when I started doing bite work with American bulldogs because so many times you see a dog go run to someone who's running away and boom, they always go forward. Well, with bulldogs, you go backwards because the good ones will hit throw their body weight and bring their big old heads back and jerk you down. I don't know how it happened. Well, I do too know how it happened. There's a little bit of bulldog in all in every Western Shepherd. And that trick of Bart's is exactly how mm -hmm. bulldogs take down bulls. So that's a lucky genetic fighting style. What it, Scott mentioned the rebite, this is, this is the, the Cadillac. This is when your dog's a black belt. On a rebite, what I have witnessed in live life, as it unfolded, was a very well-trained, uh, I've seen it done with one shepherd, and I've seen it done with a Roddy, where they hit somebody on the forearm, jerked them back, and as they jerked them back, especially the rods, because rods are just head-slinging suckers, man, and they mm -hmm. just tear everything up. The person would cut, it came around to grab the collar and the dogs re, uh, turn loose of this arm and re it there. That's what mm -hmm. when Scott says rebite. That's what we mean by rebite. Yep. It's like he's blocking. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> and, and, and this dog now has this person by his other arm. And what the first time I ever saw it happen, I thought, oh, that is gonna, he's going to come around with, it, with the first hand that got bit and grab this dog's collar now. And he, and he, and the, and the perp didn't. And I'm thinking, what the hell? So we get him to the hospital and come to find out what happened because the dogs are biting, they, they kicked into defense drive, which means they're biting hard. 
and especially with the rod he's tearing, they literally ripped the tendons. He was incapacitated. And these fingers, he couldn't <coughs> open or close them. He couldn't do anything. So if you have a dog who's biting really good, if they hit that first arm really good and do and really hard, they're going to do enough damage that this hand is now useless. If they bring this one around, then they got the guy. Now they've stretched him out, and he's defenseless. If if the person goes to kick and the dog rebites the leg, and you all have seen the video I put up of Cochise, my dog, taking someone down who kicked at him, by pulling, if you're on one foot, I guarantee you, if it's if it's a 40-pound dog who has a good bite on you, a big man, if that big man's standing on one foot, you're going down. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who you are. You know, that's why you you, uh, you work your dogs up and you get them to hit the sleeve up and hit high, and pushing them. They want the dog to push him with full bite into that sleeve, automatic. But when you start working them, you start working them backwards. Now, I'm not gonna get into the details of all that, but you're working them backwards. And he starts pulling. Then you start applying pressure to that dog when he's pulling, and that totally changes everything. Where he builds his confidence, and as more pressure is applied, the harder he pulls back on you. Yep. I mean, he takes, it's different, but, you know, like a dog will, on, on a sand, a dog will push through. Oh, yeah. When you catch a dog properly and you get him where he needs to be, most dogs, they're not going to push into you. Once you land that dog, he's going backwards. Yep. He'll come backwards, and he'll start pulling you. It's, and some of that, a lot of that's nature. Yeah, dog exactly, nature. exactly. Because, you know, it's still a tug of war. And why is it nature? You ever think about that? No, because it's that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Well, why is it that way? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm gonna mm. for all for all you push in the bite, push in the bite of aficionados. Let me explain something real clear. That's great for sport and only for sport. And I have absolute confirmation of that. If you'll think about this, we're all products of evolution, right? And whatever works best for a species to survive is what we do today, is what, the, what the successful species is doing today mm -hmm. that has been done for <coughs> thousands of years. Canines are predators. They're taking out living creatures, some of them with big old horns, they can take them out. All we do when we're using canine martial arts is enhancing a dog's genetic natural tendencies. Scott said it just a minute ago. Very naturally, when the dogs bite, they'll start pulling, right? We enhance that. Why do dogs start pulling? No one can answer that question right off, but if you think about it, they start pulling because that is a genetic tendency that they have in a fight because 10,000 years ago, if all those wolves had jumped a Tyrannosaurus and pushed in, the Tyrannosaurus would have split their throats open and we would have no dogs today. Survival so, of the fittest. Yeah. It's partly survival. Yeah, it's part of survival. Defense mode. It's exactly. And we worry about a lot. I know, again, the sport people are not going to. A lot of them are going to disagree strongly with what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and they're going to say, "Well, if a dog rebites, that's he's got bad nerves." Well, you know what? That's typewriting. That's not rebiting. Yeah, yeah, that's a different. They typewrite. Yeah, that's they got a whole bad different nerves. pressure type deal. It's a whole different. It's too much. That's hold it. We're getting that some other time. But. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, rebiting to me is typewriting. How they talk about hear them say yes. Yeah, but if we're rebiting. Okay. Damn. If we're rebiting, if if those dogs were in a fight with a grizzly bear and that grizzly bear reaches down to swat and break their neck or their back, the dog defensively is going to turn loose. That's why defensive bites are shallow. He's going to turn loose and say he's on the right kneecap and he's probably going to go back to the left kneecap. Again, natural genetic tendencies developed over thousands of years to make it possible for the canine to survive a fight with a larger enemy. And last time I looked, I haven't seen 
any grown men that weren't larger than a dog. Right. So what canine martial arts in brief are, we take the natural fighting tendencies of a dog and we enhance them and make them much, much more efficient. Simple as that. Yeah, basically, you know, enhance and uh, streamline it. Yeah. You know, yeah. And like not all dogs are the same, but basically they are. Yep. You know, cause I know, you know, a Roddy's different than a shepherd on the, on, on the get-go. You know, you can walk in on a Roddy, but you, can't, you might not walk out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but anyway, that's another whole other story for another yeah. podcast, but... You no, know, basically you're, you're right. You know, it's to me, it's protecting the dog, but it's all a lot of that hereditary, ancient. You yep. know, go on forever. But we take it there and build a confidence and add pressure, and the dogs learn. And with the techniques used, you start building. You know, if your dog training. You know, you build. You don't go in first step with a, a send on a fresh dog. No. But you work a no, dog, and you work a dog, and you start working dog up, and then it comes. Yep. Then you get the dog you want in your home, and you're, you know, you're you're safe at home. That's right. Your dog's still there, and no one's coming to your house. So is your TV and your, your computer. Yep. So and you always your 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 best friend will be uh, with you for a long time. Yep. So we hope this was informative for something. Yeah. Or somebody. And uh, Troy, thank you so much for always monitoring us. I really do appreciate it. And we thank Mr. Sinclair. I think, call it a night. I think we call it a night, and. Uh, I go home and see my dogs, like you gotta go see yours. But yep. With that being said, folks, remember it's all about the dogs. Yep. Don't forget that. Keep it real. We'll see you next week. Thanks.